And that's what this plugin does really, really well, especially on this setting. Another plugin from Safari Pedals, this time it's the Time Machine. They're calling it an instant vintage compressor and filters, but I think it actually does a lot more than that. Let's get right into it. Got a song here that I've recorded in my home studio, and I'll just play it back and turn the Time Machine off and on with a setting that I dialed in that I really liked. All right, so just looking over the plugin, we've got a bypass, we've got auto gain, which actually just links the input and output together. So as you go up on the input, the output gets turned down. You've got this comp knob, which is the compression, and then you've got the eras here. So you've got 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then you've got this noise knob. So the best way to actually understand what's happening in each one of these eras is actually to crank up the noise and hear what it's doing. Here on the 50s, if we crank up the noise, you can hear it's emulating sort of a uh, vinyl record, right? Moving on to the 60s. That kind of sounds like static, maybe some tape hiss, but more just like kind of degraded, sort of like static. Now the 70s one definitely sounds more like tape hiss, very distinct tape hiss. And then 80s, this almost sounds like cassette tape hiss. So understanding the noise that is actually associated with each one of these eras kind of gives you a clue as to kind of what sound each one of these eras is emulating. If you sit and listen to it, it's not just looping noise. Like it sounds like it's sort of being like procedurally generated. It's random. It sounds like there's a random element happening to it. And what's also really cool is you get up into the 60s here. You can actually hear the noise is auto panning somewhat between the two between the left and the right and the same thing's happening in the 70s here too now one thing that i don't really like about the plugin is that as soon as you open it the noise is kind of a little high up there if you aren't expecting that you could think maybe something's wrong with the plugin or you could think this is like sort of a gimmick and i understand the argument that it's a gimmick to introduce noise like this but the fact that it's really telling you kind of what these different eras what these sounds are going to be like it's actually kind of educational about what you're going to get so i'm going to go through each one of these things i'll just loop a section and i have the input the output and the compression settings all the same and i've got the noise cranked up a little bit so you can kind of hear what the noise is doing in the context of the song so let's just start with the 50s here So what the plugin is doing, or at least what it sounds like to me is like maybe an emulation of like a preamp, a compressor, and then the medium to which it's being recorded to. And I feel like you can really hear that sort of formula happening in the seventies thing. And I think the seventies, you know, it sounds like tape, 
it definitely sounds like tape to me. And as you sort of crank this input, you get sort of that tape saturation thing where, you know, you can hear, um, especially in the drums, so in the drums, you can hear when it's bypassed, it's kind of got that crispy sort of harshness to it. And then when you engage it, it kind of rolls off the high ends a little bit. And that to me is like tape saturation. And that's what this plugin does really, really well, especially on this setting. And I honestly think it does it better than some of the other tape saturation pl plugins that I've played with. This to me sounds like it's modeling a vintage like 70s preamp, a vintage compressor, and what that would sound like going to tape. So I don't know if they're actually emulating actual gear, like had pieces of gear in mind, like microphones, preamps, compressors, or anything like that. Maybe they're just going for a general sound. But if you look in the manual, they say, each of the eras will create a totally different vibe of compression, filters, and saturation based on the best of each era, or actually our favorites. So it kind of makes me think that they're chasing not only a sound, but actually specific pieces of gear used in that sound. So we'll just loop the drums here and I'll crank the input and then crank the, the compression a little bit so you can hear kind of what how it works. And you can hear, if you really got the input cranked, it kind of does that splatty thing. If you're like overloading, um, you know, a tube preamp, that's what that sounds like. And you get the same thing in this 70s era. Maybe not as splatty as it is in like the, the 60s era. And then the 80s, you have a little bit more fidelity, a little bit more roundness to the kick drum in there. So there's some really cool stuff that you could do with this plugin from like a sound design perspective, right? So I mean, if you take this drum loop and crank up the noise on it, back off the input a little bit, crank the compressor, And that kind of almost sounds like a cool breakbeat. So if you haven't yet, go check out Safari Pedal's YouTube channel. Um, Gnome over there is doing some really interesting content where he's actually sort of like talking about the process of making plugins, uh, how he got started, and it's kind of an interesting, transparent look into kind of the plugin world, how things get made. And, you know, he really seems to know his stuff and he seems very passionate about what he's doing. Uh, it's not very often that you get kind of like a peek behind the curtain of like, you know, what these companies are doing. It adds sort of, uh, you know, a humanity to what can be a very like sort of cold and analytical place in the world of audio plugins. There's an affiliate link down in the description if you wanna use that to make any purchases over on Safari Pedals. A small portion of that will come back to this channel. Super cool plugin. Spend some time with it. Learn kind of the different nuances of what it does. 